Okay. Buenos días, Alicante. My name is Eric Rasmussen, and I'm here today to talk about a, a relatively new framework that I'm sure you've heard of because Tejas just told us about it, called SolidJS. Now, first a little bit about me. Uh, React developer is a very large part of my identity. I have been building web apps in React for literally 10 years, ever since it was released. And I was such an early adopter that I, I sort of got hurt on some of its rough edges at the beginning. Uh, like there was no way to store multiple, in, there was no way to store form data, for example. And so I wrote a couple form libraries that became pretty popular called Redux Form and React Final Form that are still pretty popular today, but they're not the, the bigger one. And what I am not, however, is a solid developer. Uh, I'm just a React developer that has learned a little bit of solid and in the same way that I think I would not be a great person to teach beginner React because I've like internalized so much of the complexities, uh, I think I'm in a pretty good position to teach a basic solid, especially to a React developer because that's how I see th the lens that I see through. So first let's go back to computer science class and talk about some terminology. So imperative programming is where you tell the computer how to accomplish a task. So back in the jQuery days, for example, you would say, when the document is ready, find the button, register a click listener on the button, and when that button is clicked, we find the element with the ID greeting, and then we add the highlighted class to it, or something like this. And if you wanted to remove that class on the next click, well, you had to write all that out and tell it what to do. It's just, it was exhausting. Uh, then came along declarative programming, where you tell the computer what to show based on the internal state of the application. And this is what React gave us. So with React, as I'm sure you all know, you start off with some state, and then you, the developer, go and find the button, and you say, when the user clicks this button, change the state. And then you go and find the greeting element yourself, and you say, depending on the state, either show the highlighted class or not. And if you wanted to toggle on the next click, that was, that was easy. Uh, you just worry about the state, and you don't have to think about the class anymore. So now we can talk about a subset of declarative programming called reactive programming. So reactive programming is a declarative programming paradigm built on data-centric event emitters. So what on earth does that mean? Uh, we've already discussed what declarative programming is, but data-centric event emitters? Uh, before we get to that, I want to quickly go through the example on the Wikipedia page for reactive programming. They explain it by contrasting it with imperative programming. So with imperative programming, you can set a variable, set another variable, and then do some calculation and assign that to another variable, and then you have the result. And this is, if you wanted to change one of the inputs, your result wouldn't change because you haven't done the calculation again. Like, this is, this is like the way computers work. Like, we all know this. But what if it didn't? What, like, what if it did change? That is the promise of reactive programming. So how can we rewrite this just in plain JavaScript to be more reactive? If we change rather than saving the values into our variables, if we make our variables functions that emit those values, then when we request the sum, the calculation is happening when we request it. So now when we change one of the inputs, the, uh, the value actually changes. This is reactive programming. So how do we go from this to data that emits its own events? Well, that's where we get to this lovely word that's been flying around everywhere this year, uh, signals. Now, a signal is a value that remembers everyone that reads it and then informs them when the value changes. Uh, I couldn't find an authority figure on this, so I guess it's me. <laughs> uh, so how do we do signals in solid? So in solid, we call this function called create signal, and this looks an awful lot like use state. You, we get a tuple of the value and a setter. And then we can print out the value, and then we can change the value, and then we can read the value back. Now, as I was playing around and learning solid, I found lots of places where you can just really, if you're thinking like a React developer, you can really shoot yourself in the foot. 
so if you notice something different about this, uh, I'm going to call it uh, foot gun number one. Uh, signal values are getter functions. You have to remember this. So you're not, it's not really the value, it's a function to give you the value. Uh, and like, you could, you could like, rename this, but don't do that because that's not the standard in the solid community, and it's really okay to reason about them as values. Um, but you just have to remember to call them as functions. And then we get this other interesting benefit called derived signals. So simply by writing a function that consumes one of our signals, that is now a signal, albeit a read-only signal. But if we make a function to update the, the count, and then we call it several times, both the count and the double are being updated. They're both sort of these magical signals. And the place you've most likely experienced this is in spreadsheets. Uh, the whole power of spreadsheets comes from the fact that you can define a formula in one cell that can consume values or other derived values from other cells, and then it just gives you all this power because you can, uh, everything changes as it, as it works. So if we're talking about React and reactive programming, we have to talk about uh, the elephant in the room that has already entered the room. Uh, people are fond of saying, but React isn't reactive, right? Uh, and it's true. If you want to get super computer science technical about it, no, React is not reactive programming because React decouples the events that change the data from the component updates via a scheduler. So when you call set state, it doesn't cause the update. It puts that component into a, we need, need, we need to update this eventually queue. Uh, however, does it really matter? No. Uh, stop doing this. Uh, so to start off, we're going to have a, a little pop quiz. Is this a React component or a solid component? Okay, don't, don't raise your hand, but uh, think, make, make your decision. Uh, trick question, we don't really know, it's, it's both. That's how similar the syntax is. Both React and Solid uh, divide UI into components. Components are just functions. Components take props. Components output JSX, and you can compose components together via JSX. So let's go to the example that everyone has to use. I think it's in our contract as speakers. Um, the counter example. So in, in React, we use use state. And in solid, we use create signal. And then we can output the value. In solid, of course, because it's a signal, we're calling the function. And then on click, we can update the value. However, good React uh, this, this, is not, this is not what's considered good React because, uh, because it's rendering in this queue, you could potentially click the button so fast that you miss one of the clicks. So the proper way to do this in React, uh, as you may know, is to use the setter, the functional version of the setter that gives you the previous value and then you have to give it back the next value. And turns out Solid supports this as well. So, Already, our on-click functions are exactly the same in these, both, in these two frameworks. Uh, so even though these look extremely similar, what's going on under the hood is completely different, and we're about to get to that. OK, so what if we want our counter to count up automatically? Right, so let's get rid of our button, and we need everyone's favorite hook, use effect, and in use effect, we need to create an interval, and we need to remember to clear the interval, and then we have to remember our uh, dependency array. Now, expert React mm, people will see the, the bug here, that this is a terrible way to do this, because we're gonna, every time we change our count, we're going to clear the interval and set it again, which is just dumb. So the way to properly do this is to use that functional version of the set count so we don't have any dependencies. So this is going to start when our component mounts, and then uh, stop when it dismounts. OK, so how about solid? Well, in solid, we're going to kill the button. And hold on to your seats here. Uh, this is actual solid. Uh, we're going to set the interval. And then to clear the interval, we're going to call this on cleanup. 
Now, if you're like me the first time I saw this syntax, you're very concerned about what's going on here. <laughs> How are you setting an interval in your component function? Uh, and this is the most mind-blowing thing about Solid for React developers is what I'm going to call foot gun number two. The component function is only called once. How can, how can that be? Like, what? How can this be? So let me see if I can explain. So in React, we have this sort of imaginary line through the, through, through the return statement, where above is where we put all our hooks, and below is our JSX. And in Solid, we have sort of the same imaginary line, where above the line is code that's going to run when the component mounts, and below is your JSX. And this is because React is a just JavaScript framework that re-renders to a virtual DOM every time the data changes, and then performs a diff to know which actual DOM elements to update. Whereas Solid is not just JavaScript. It's a compiled template language that remembers which DOM elements depend on which state. So that's a long sen sentence. Let's see if we can uh, dissect this. So when this component mounts here, Solid notices that the H1 depends on the count signal. And so whenever the count signal updates, Solid knows to update only that H1 in the DOM. This is how Solid gets away with not having a virtual DOM. There's no diffing, which makes it extremely fast, because it isn't re-rendering the entire app any time something changes. It just remembers what depends on what. This is what makes signals awesome. So now that we know this, uh, what's wrong with this code? Well, this is a very common mistake for beginners uh, in Solid that are coming from React, is this line here. Uh, because everything before the return only happens on mount, we're only doing this calculation once. So when count changes, the double count is still going to remain the same. Uh, you, should, you should never uh, get the value of a signal uh, out before your JSX, basically. And I'm calling, going to call this foot gun number three. Uh, only in JSX, never use values, only use signals. Uh, and never get their value before the JSX. So let's talk about props. So in React, the way we use props is either directly in the function definition or on the first line, usually. We destructure our props. And this makes our JSX look, look very nice. Uh, and you would think that you could do this in Solid, but you'd be very wrong. Uh, because in Solid, props are sort of magical. Uh, because props are actually secret signals. Uh, so you don't have to think, are you passing a value, or are you pass a, passing a signal? When your component receives the props, they are all signals. Because, and the way they do that is that this is really, they're really getters in this object. Uh, so, the, so this, this, this line here is a, is a big red flag, cannot do this. Because, why? Because we're getting the value of a signal before the JSX. And I'm going to go ahead and elevate this to its own foot gun, never destructure props. So, how do we fix this? Easy. We just use the actual props object and get rid of the destructuring. We're good to go. However, in modern React, the way we define default values for props is in the destructuring. So what, what can we do in Solid? Well, Solid provides a, uh, a special function for this called merge props that maintains their signalness. And then you can just use that object for your JSX. OK, let's look at some common hooks. Uh, I'm going to go officially on the record and say that use effect is the single most dangerous hook in React. Uh, you can quote me on that, but I'm not the only one. Uh, so let's look at what you do with use effect in React. So much of what we do with use effect is adding event listeners or fetching data or subscribing to different things. On mount, like you almost always want that to happen uh, with an empty dependency array. Uh, and all of that you can just do before the return in Solid. Uh, and for the other things where like, you need to do something when data changes or listen for, for something, there's a function called createEffect that lets us do that. So let's look at that. Say, 
for a contrived example, we want to like output to the console every time our value changes. So in React, we would create a use effect. So this looks pretty good. Oops, can't forget the dependency array. Uh, so let's look at solid. So uh, in solid, we just add this create effect uh, function here, and it consumes our, our signal, and we're good to go. Uh, oops, we forgot our dependency array. Nope, just kidding. No dependency arrays in solid. Uh, yes. And, and why is that? Well, remember, signals are things that remember who consumes them and notifies them when they change. So create effect is going to be notified when this count signal that it consumes changes, and then it's going to rerun. Pretty cool. OK, how about use memo? Use memo is most often used, uh, I mean, is for doing some expensive calculation uh, that you don't want to have happen on every render. And the way we do this in React is with use memo. Uh, oops, forgot the dependency array. And in solid, uh, the way we do this, so this, this looks like it might be OK, except this line here, what are we doing wrong? Well, we're getting the value of a signal before our JSX. So can't do that. But we can solve this simply by making this a derived signal. Now our expensive result is a signal, and so we can just use it in our JSX. However, say, for example, you, uh, you needed to print this. For some reason, you needed to print this out several times. Every time you call that signal, you're going to be running that, cal that expensive calculation. And so to get around this, we can use create memo, which is going to m memoize this, uh, this function. And we forgot, never mind, uh, no dependency array. This is solid. Uh, noticing a theme? So, uh, so let's talk about flow control. Flow control in the solid ecosystem is what they call how you, how you render your JSX. So they have this component called show. And this is the way we do stuff in React. Like we want to sometimes show this depending on state, sometimes show this. And I've been using React for so long that this ternary no, like it no longer seems gross to me, but let's be honest. Uh, and you can totally do this in solid. This ternary works just fine. But they have this, this nice component called show where we can remove the ternary, wrap our predicate in show, and then our else clause goes into this fallback prop, which, I don't know, it reads a lot nicer to me. And it's show's cousin is uh, the combination of switch and match. So like in React, where you can have like uh, a chain of these ternaries, again, you can chain ternaries in solid if you really want to, but you probably don't. You can wrap this in a switch, and then each of, your, each of your cases can be put in match, and then your default can go into fallback. And you could totally write these exact components in React, but no one does. So anyway, uh, I think it looks a lot nicer. So let's talk about looping. So in React, because it's you know, just JavaScript, we use array.map to go through our items to print out our JSX. And in solid, you can totally do this as well. But oh man, we forgot that key prop in React. Uh, the key prop in React, uh, as you may or may not know, like helps React know which DOM element belongs to which item, because creating DOM elements is really expensive, but shifting them around if you reorder things is quicker. So React really wants us to give that, that key prop. In solid, uh, again, you can do it like this, but there's this nice uh, component called for, for each, and then you give it this render function as child syntax, and you get the item. And because you're using, because of the magic of signals, uh, you don't need to specify which key prop. Solid is like, I got you. Okay, how about error boundary? So in React, you can go to the docs, and you can copy and paste the very last class component in all the docs. And for every single one of your React projects, you need to copy and paste this into your project. And that's the way you catch errors on an error boundary. 
Solid just implemented it and gives it to you. Uh, don't know why React doesn't do this. All right, let's talk about style. So the style prop in React, you use these lower camel case uh, syntax, and you don't have to spec for some things, you don't have to specify that you mean pixels, like when you say margin or whatever. In solid, you have to actually specify the kebab case, like in real c CSS, and the, and the pixel unit. So you're really closer to the platform than, than React is. Okay, in solid, there's a class prop. I've been using React so long that this code doesn't look weird to me, but uh, that's not HTML. HTML uses class, so solid does too. Solid also has this extra thing called class list. Now, if you've been programming React for a while, for sure you've done something like this, where you have to use like a string template and with a ternary, and it's just, this is horrible. Uh, and like so many of the horrible things in React, there are people in the ecosystem that provide better solutions. So if you've ever used uh, Jed Watson's class names library, it makes it a lot nicer, where you can provide, these are the classes that I want to always be there, and then here's this object where the key is the class that you want applied when the value is truthy. It's much more elegant and easy to read and easy to think about. Uh, Solid just provides this out of the box. That's what the class list prop is. You give it this object syntax and it does that for you. So again, if we look at the native way of doing things, I don't know. Okay, life cycle methods. So say we want to run some code on mount and unmount. In React, you use everyone's favorite hook, use effect, and you can log something when the component mounts and, and give back a function that gets called when the component unmounts. Except this will run on every render because we've got the, the dependency array. Uh, in solid, the way you do this is you, there's a function called onMount and a function called onCleanup and you just give that tasks there. And you can give as many of these as you want and you can even like use you can call functions and they can call these and they're all going to be queued. And of course, you only have to do this once because the component function only renders once, only calls once. And hey, no dependency array needed. Okay, let me quickly go through some of the other interesting bits of the solid API. There is a lot that is very familiar to React developers. Uh, there's a context API with create context that is almost verbatim the same as React. They have lazy components. They've got suspense. They've got this thing that's sort of like use query where you can fetch things and they cache nicely. Uh, that's very nice. There's an Immer-like mutation API with produce. And there's even a next-like application framework with the perfect name of solid start. Uh, and it handles routing and all your SS acronyms. Less familiar, however, is things like uh, nested creativity with create store. So signals are awesome, but they're just a primitive. Sometimes you're going to want uh, arrays of, of re reactive stuff or objects of reactive stuff, and that's what stores give you. And then there's a way to batch updates. Like, we, unlike in React, when you, when you call set state, set state, set, set state altogether, React remembers that and you know, marks this to be re-rendered with a new state. But in solid, calling the, calling the setter actually goes and changes the DOM. So if you know you're going to call a bunch of stuff, you can batch them together with, uh, with batch. And then they all write out to the DOM at the same time. And there's this special thing called directives with, the, with use props. Uh, I encourage you to Google a blog post that I wrote where I connected my final form library to, to solid using only this one prop. You put uh, use field onto an input and it gives, um, it gives a way to talk to the DOM, which is 
very low level, and you can do some really awesome things. So let's quickly uh, do a foot gun recap. Uh, you have to remember that signal values are getter functions. They aren't the actual value. Uh, and the component, phone, the component function is only called once. That's the crazy thing. It's so hard to get your head around, but it really is where the power of solid comes from. And you should only get the value of signals either in JSX or in other derived signals. Never call a getter before the return in your component. And the corollary of that is never destructure props. And just for good measure, So let's talk a little bit about performance. Uh, so when they first announced React, it blew everyone's mind because they were like, no, nah, really, just render, re-render everything all the time. We'll handle it. We've we got this virtual DOM thing. It's super fast. We'll do all the DOM updates for you. We'll figure it out. And it was absolutely game changing. That's what gave us the declarative programming. And it was amazing, and it really, it really is fast enough, almost always. Uh, sometimes you can run into problems in React where, why is this re-rendering? What's going on? This is too slow. This is too slow. Like, there's a whole dev tool built just to manage this. That's how much of a pain it can be. Uh, and when it comes to re-rendering, uh, that word doesn't mean anything in solid. Like, there is no re-rendering. Every time you change a signal, solid surgically updates that bit of the DOM that needs to change. There's no concept of re-rendering at all. And this makes React, this makes solid uh, fast. It's so much faster than a lot of the frameworks. And you can go to their website and actually look at these benchmarks. So in conclusion, uh, which should you use, right? That's the, that's the question that you want to know. Uh, yeah. React is the well-known incumbent that has its well-known strengths and weaknesses. And that means that if you're having a problem, probably someone else has had it before you. There's probably a Stack Overflow question about it. Or the modern version of that is that the LLM models have trained on thousands of lines of React code, and they can probably cough up a, comp a component for you uh, that's it, it's easier for things like that. And it's also way easier to hire developers uh, for the ubiquitous incumbent framework, right? Uh, and Solid, however, is a relative newcomer, and the benefits of which we... Uh, the it, and it benefits from the 10 years that we've learned using React. There's a lot of new, cooler things in Solid but we don't yet know what its weaknesses are going to end up being because it's so young. And as with any new programming language or framework, uh, the, more you, the more you dabble in it and learn uh, and expand your mind of other ways of doing things, the better you programmer you will be in the language and framework that you do for a living. Uh, so I hope I've been able to introduce you to a little bit of what makes Solid amazing and I hope you can give it a try in some project sometime soon. Thank you very much.